All right, we're joined now by the Assistant General Secretary of Child Protection Network, Lagos State, Comrade Ebenezer Omejalile. It's good to have you join us right now. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. And we also have Cynthia Ibe, Legal and Advocacy Officer, Alliance for Africa. You're welcome to TVC Breakfast. Thank you so much. All right, yeah. let's start with you, uh, Comrade Ebenezer. Let me ask, first of all, we, we often hear stories of, like the report we just played now, we often hear stories of children being raped, children being uh, abused one way or the other. But how unprotected is the Nigerian child if we have to put things in perspective for understanding? Well, the situation in the economy right now is really taking a down toll on the Nigerian economy. And also parents in their own aspects uh, leaving their sanity in the hands of so many things. And also the issue of the proximity of living in house household also affects what is going on right now. Because most of the cases we've been having, most of them occur with those who live in close proximity of living. Okay, let's, let's look at the rights of the child. We have yeah. rights to development, rights to life. Yeah. And what other rights are there? Yeah, the rights, you know, if you say right of the child, right to live, right from before they are eventually delivered, the child has a right to live, the child has a right to be breastfed, the child has a right to be immunized, the, the child has a right to receive good education, the child has a right to be comfortable, the child has a right to freedom of association, and the child has a right to say, okay, you're not just changing your child's school without having consent because this takes a high toll of negative aspect on the child because mm. that's what our findings shows that okay I'm the father I have a right to take it away without thinking that the child might is in this integration already occurs mm. with the child so all the aspects of saying they, they are, the, the, the child rights started right from inception when they have been concerned by their mother so the effect of saying that the, there's, there's no two ways about it Every other aspect in lives that won't pass through has to do with the right of the child. Okay. Now, let me bring in Cynthia here. The, it, from reports we hear now, it seems that the, the, the abuse against the child, the rates are increasing if we have to check for statistics and all of that. What is responsible for the factors between the past maybe one, two, three decades ago and now? I mean, it's not like... It's increasing quite all right, and um, it has been there since. Oh. It's just that because of social media and other avenues, it's, it's reported coming, more now. It's reported more, okay. and then people are coming, are seeing it. Oh, so this thing is really happening, you know. So before we people used to think it's superstition. Oh no, it can't happen to me. No, 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 no. It can't be my child. It can't be my child. It's definitely not my child, you know. But these things are happening on a daily basis, and cases are coming up on a regular basis, you know. Parents still think, oh no, you can't be my child. It can't happen to me. Oh, if you tell a parent, oh, start, um, have you started t talking to your child about um, you know, sexual activities? And I said, ah, but she's just two years. What will I tell her? You know, do you think, don't you think it's too early? And a two-year-old child, even a newborn baby is being abused. All right. I will tie that back to the issue of the rights of the child. How many of those parents really understand what these rights are? And how many of those children, as little as they are, really understand what their rights are, in your opinion? Even as a lawyer, we're still learning these rights, you know. And um, parents are not aware of these rights. Most people feel, oh, I've given birth to this child. I train her or train him the way I choose it to be, you know, but that's not true. There are laid down laws that a parent should follow. Even an unborn child has rights, you know, and can sue if um, need be once the child is born and the child feels that, oh, I've been, my rights at some point before I was conceived or? has been infringed. Okay, so when, we, when, so when we're talking, sorry Mike, so, when, so when, we, when we're talking about the issue of abuse and the parents not that feeling that can happen to my child, I, I'd like you to tell us what your role is, what your organization is doing really to, uh, because there seem to 
be some kind of disconnect, some kind of lacuna between what these rights are and what the knowledge level of this of this parent and the beneficiary, the children. Um, my organization is trying to sensitize parents, mothers, you know, schools, teachers to be aware of these rights. Because most times parents are career parents and they are so busy. They don't even have time for their children these days. And then you see that the whole burden is on the school. So the school now is the one having to carry on with these children. And most times the parents don't even have to find, like a, there was a case recently. It was in school that um, a five-year-old, the mom was called upon and she came and the um, teacher told her that they noticed that the child has been fingering her other classmates. And when she was called upon, she said it was from her father and her auntie. Meaning it is hereditary or something? Or uh, what? No, 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 the cases no, we hear now are that fathers, it's so rampant. The father issue is when you go to court, you hear fathers are the ones doing it abusing these days. Their, abusing their own children. Their children. Okay, now if, if we have to bring, you, because you were talking about the issue of trying to sensitize. We know that in the eyes of the law, ignorance has no place. Ignorance now, has what been. is the rule? What, how, what, in the area of persecuting, what cases have been persecuted so far when it comes to abuse against children? You know, in the Nigerian system, things are still. What is we're, the Nigerian system? We're still you are, you, are, you, you are in the legal profession. <laughs> yes. so you tell us what the Nigerian the, system the, is. The laws have lacuna. And you know, it's not very easy. For example, in a rape case where um, a child. The child must have washed off, for example, the um, semen or the, the, or it must have been a series, like a case recently. Um, it was a, ser a, a series of occurrence. The guy was always raping her. And then by the time they got to the hospital, um, the doctor said there was no bruises. You know, and meaning that because of the series of occurrence, she had healed from bruises. But there was penetration. But he noticed that from measuring the centimeter and all that, that the child wasn't um, was defiled. So that fact was established. So it's not is that is not an easy process. We're still working on it in terms of the law, trying to hold the um, victims. And you see, the um, churches are not helping situations because then you see um, when you take when we take up these cases, you hear. Oh no, my pastor said I should, um, um, I should leave it for God. It's God to judge. And then you see the victim, the um, accusers going away. All right. Uh, that's talking about uh, laws. We have quite a number of them. The African Charter is there. The UN Convention on the, the Right of the Child is there. The Child Rights Act is also, also there. there. Yes. Why, what, so why, why, why is it not effective? Well, you know, uh, for the aspect of the Child Rights Act, you know, it was uh, first enacted in 2003 and Lagos State domesticated it, which was translated to Child Rights Law in Lagos State. And also they have the Domestic, uh, domestic Violence Law, which has also taken place. The reason why we have this, that states should take ownership of this various act of laws, like the Child Rights Act is uh, also is, uh, basically meant for the Women, Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty, Elevation, the Ministry of Youth and Social Development. These are the two uh, bodies who are championing this, this cause in terms of uh, the child rights law to ensure. Then the civil society aspect that comes in, civil society and faith-based organizations have the role to, pay, to play. For instance, now the Women Affairs and Youth and Social Development are to prosecute such cases Whether a child has been violated, has been abused, has been exploited in an unusual manner, they have those powers to prosecute along with the Ministry of Youth and Social Development. Although the Ministry of Youth and Social Development, you know, they are responsible for the 18 unit families, family, 18 family units across Lagos State, which they take along with the civil society. The civil society also, the job is to respond and also prevent occurrences of the right by ensuring that the child knows, like what she rightly said, the sensitization aspect, like with engaging the community development committee, the community development association, 
we're creating the religious body right recently now that you know it's been i would say awesome in terms of the right to be fully known because we just need more aggressive awareness All right. because right now it's a it's a over, coming over All right. we'll come back and talk more about this perhaps some a bureaucratic bottleneck might be hindering maybe we'll, we'll take a look at that but let's turn out this information children's day is celebrated annually on may the 27th globally as a day to honor children now it was first proclaimed in 1954 to protect children from working long hours in dangerous circumstances and allow all children access to education a survey by the National Population Commission estimates that half of the children in Nigeria experience physical violence, one in four girls and one in ten boys experience sexual violence, and one in six girls and one in five boys experience emotional violence before they reach the age of 18. Now the theme for this year's commemoration is protect the rights of the child in the face of violence and insecurity. And the Minister for Women Affairs and Social Development, Senator Aisha Jumei Al-Hassan, has called on stakeholders to address the problem of violence against children in the country. A reliable data on violence against children in Nigeria is scarce because violence is often not reported as, a, as it occurs mostly within the context where it is regarded as normal, such as within the family circle or behind the privacy of the home. Now, a recent survey shows that majority of children never tell anyone about their experience and less than 5% of those children who experience violence never receive the support they need to recover. Don't forget, the survey also showed us that violence against the children is not confined to marginalized groups. Violence against children transcends social and economic status. It impacts rich and the poor, so no one is really safe here. Mm. Urban and rural areas, educated, and even those out of school. Yeah, certainly. But sadly, Lagos is the first state in Nigeria to respond to the call of uh, President Muhammad Buhari for every state in the country to initiate their own campaigns during the National Year of Action to End Violence Against Children, launched in September 2015. Now, the state announced priority actions to be taken by state and non-state actors in short term and long term to effectively prevent and respond to violence against children. Now, Cross River State also has a Child Rights Act that places zero tolerance to any kind of abuse against children. According to the International Labour Organization, that's the ILO, the number of children working under the age of 14 in Nigeria is estimated at 15 million. These jobs include uh, being street vendors, beggars, car washers, or watches, and shoe shiners. Other works are uh, also include apprentices, uh, mechanics, hairdressers and bus conductors while a large number of work. Some of them work as domestic servants and firm hands. All right, now in, in August 23rd, uh, 2003, rather, the Nigerian government formally adopted three international labor organization conventions setting a minimum age of 18 for the employment of children. Mm. All right, let's, let's come to uh, uh, Cynthia here. The, let, let's go back to the basics where the family is involved in here. The parents, if we have to narrow it down to the parents, what are the parents doing differently that is making the children vulnerable to abuse or lack of protection? Parents are not starting early. They, are, they, they wait till the child is 18. Like um, I read somewhere that the um, child was 11 and the, par the parent, it was on social media and she said, oh, but it was a confined something. And she said, oh, my child has started seeing her period and I don't know how to go about it. And I laughed because I mean, my daughter is four years old and I already have a close relationship with her and she already knows what a period looks like. So at I- At four? At four. Really? Yes, because you need to start young. I had I, I was in court and I had a case and the child was five years old and the guy was giving her toys and the mom didn't know and this thing was going on. If she had that close bond with that daughter, they were having their baths together talking about these issues. That first attempt would have raised a brow and the child would be so free, so confident to approach the mom and say, mommy, I'm going through this. I have a slogan with my daughter. 
and we and we talk about it. I tell her, if anybody holds you like this, what do you do? She'll say, tell mommy. What if he says, don't tell mommy? She'll say, tell mommy. Why? Because I don't want you to go through abuse. She knows what her vulva is. She knows nobody goes there. We have to start now if we want it to stop. We shouldn't say, oh no, it's not going to happen to me. What if it happens to your child? What if it happens to you? You know, most parents, we all keep saying, oh, we weren't a victim, we weren't a victim. Nobody's owning up. But if you are a victim, you know what it takes. You know the struggle going through life, trying to, you know, adjust. Because sexual pleasure is not something you toil with. So the earlier we started, even with our boy child, I'm waiting, my child is, my son is two years old, and I'm waiting to start imbibing it into him so that he doesn't mess with any girl, just as nobody will mess with him and mess with his sister. All right some tiger mommy here today. Well, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going out on TVC Entertainment, but viewers there can continue with TVC Breakfast on TVC Nigeria on Concert Channel 190, DSTV Channel 418, GoTV 45, and ACTV 510.